about to eat. It's July the 12th. Is it the 12th or is it the 11th? No, it's the 11th. Um, I just want to say hi to everybody. Hi, all my new subscribers. Um, it's all love over here. So, um, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you look like, where you come from, it's all love. We're all God's children. And I think when we realize that, the world will be a better place. So, I'm, you know, things come to me, and I don't know if it's in spirit. Some of it is, and sometimes it's just my own intuition. But I want to talk about today, um, workplace culture. Something I'm very familiar with. If you're new here, I've been in the HR field now for maybe... When I started off doing it, do this in HR, probably in 95, but... I've actually been doing interviewing and hiring and things like that since 89. So I've been doing it a long time. And um, I think the fact that I have a lot of compassion for people is one of my greatest assets. Never ever, I, I do have a degree in business administration, graduated from LSU. Um, but that doesn't make me any better than you. So even if you have a seventh grade education, I still respect you just like I respect the CEO or a person with a PhD, JD, or whatever, MD. Uh, we're all God's children. And uh, so, but I want to talk about the uh, things that happen in the workplace. And what brings me to this is kind of emotional situation, but the law is going to see me through it because this could help somebody. So my, my nephew, um, he died in a car wreck in May of um, 2016. Yeah, um, he was 27 years old and he worked for this company, a very reputable company, the co a company with very good benefits, growth opportunity, the opportunity to travel and all of that, but he can't, and I'm going to give you a little bit about his story. Um, very smart. My nephew was able, y'all, he took a, uh, he was building his own computer. Uh, very mild-mannered, soft-spoken, very intelligent, very intelligent. And um, his life here was short, but I think when a person's life is short here on earth, they touch people in a way that change their lives. You understand what I'm saying? Because I think when God bring you here, he gives you a purpose. And when your purpose is fulfilled, he takes you back. He brings you back to him. I, I really, truly believe that. Um, so, he can't. What happened was, the, the, um, the company was hiring and he applied and he went through the process and everything and he got hired. So, when he went through orientation, my sister, his mom told me he got in a job. And so, he, um, my family consults with me about a lot of things. Um, like I said, that's one of those talents that God gives me. I, I can, I can, I can kind of sort out other people's dilemmas sometimes, and sometimes I can't do mine. Go figure that out. But anyway, honestly, so but what happened was he, um, my sister called me, so he got on the phone and we were talking, and she told me he had gone through the process, but I didn't hear anything else about it because it's a long drawn out process. So when we talked, he said, um. Guess what, A.T.? I said, well, he said, I'm on full-time. I said, huh? Because a lot of people get hired through a temporary agency. He said, yeah. So, when it came to the mechanical aptitude and everything, there was no doubt that he was going to be successful in passing it. You know, the test and everything. So, he got the job, and um, he said when they started doing the orientation and everything, and it was a lot of training, people were asking, well, who do you know? How did you get in? He, he didn't have a college degree, and he was like, well, I took the test nothing but God. He was right where the Lord wanted him to be because check this out y'all. Most people who got hired knew somebody was related to somebody and then sometimes you know God it's just God. <laughs> you know there's no other way to explain it. And so anyway he started working there and then um, he had to go off for some training and he met new people and things like that and so he was there, I don't know how long, but then he came to me a few times because he know I'm in HR. He started telling me about he was having some problems um, on the job. 
and that um, some of the people would tease him or they would try to get all off in his, his, his personal business and everything and he's a private person even at home you know he, even in the family you know he like he would always we would have things going on and, and he would talk and stuff but he was just a mild-mannered very respectful young man and in a lot of ways my my son is the same way and uh oftentimes he asked me about my nephew oh excuse me it got kind of bad for him on the job i think somebody he trained with away from here actually transferred to this location and the guy was giving him a hard time now you know i know a lot of us probably experience this when when you're when you're a fast learner and you're kind of smart sometimes people take that as you're trying to be arrogant or whatever and it, it, it makes life kind of difficult for you because i've had that to happen to me before it's not that you're uh I don't know it's just it's just something that God gives you where you stand out or you're able to discern information and pick up on things quicker than other people and some people view that as a problem you don't be jealous of the gift that the Lord gave somebody else y'all don't do that to people it's hard but anyway he came to me and he would tell me about different situations and sometimes I say you know I would tell him I say you know I said don't look at it like that I say just sit back sometime and just think about things and try to overlook things don't worry about it but if you go to work every day and you don't bother anybody nobody should bother you nobody should bother you and that's why I want to talk about workplace place culture and I've said this before, HR managers have to be thick skinned, you have to be compassionate, and you can't always go with the status quo. If something is being done that's not right, you have to address that. You can't turn a blind eye to it. If a person comes to you complaining about they've been discriminated against or, you know, or, 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 or they've been bullied or whatever on the job, you have to take action. And a lot of times, y'all, I feel like, um, and, and I'm, don't I don't want anybody to take this the wrong way because I don't mean it in a way to uphold or condone anything but what I'm saying is when you allow a culture in your workplace where people feel intimidated they feel threatened they feel bullied or whatever you're you're you know you're what you're doing is you're simmering up for some discord in your in your location you are anytime there's an issue like just because I'm a woman right well, we know that. But what I'm saying is, in my life, I don't bother anybody. I'm private. I don't sit at work and discuss all my business. But I come to work and I do my job. And my co-workers the same way. That doesn't give you the go-ahead or the approval to go ahead and start making fun or... Um, uh, bullying or disrespecting me and if a person come to you with a problem it needs to be addressed and you see a lot of times and this is the part I'm saying I don't condone but I have seen a lot of times where people feel like or they've been threatened or discriminated against and then you know they having a hard day or they going through something and then they become that person that, that hurts somebody else or themselves. We have to address issues as they come. Don't overlook things. You know what I'm saying? If you got a person in your organization. I hope I'm coming to the right place. If you got a person in your organization. And you see that person doesn't really mingle with anybody or whatever. You need to make sure you have policies and stuff put in place where that person is not going to be bullied. Because some people are introverts. We do have to work. But we shouldn't be bullied because we don't sit in the office and disclose all our personal information. What we ate last night. Who we slept with and all that. That's, you know, as long as a person do their job, leave that person alone. Leave that person alone. And, you know, you can't just sit in the office and see those things happen or people come tell you about it and you don't act on it. You have to act on that. Give people more. People want to be respected. We had a meeting yesterday. And I was telling the people in the meeting, 
in this committee meeting we had. Listen. More than a whole lot of money and uh, all that, people want to be respected. You know, they want to know that they're being treated fairly and they're being respected. So if they're in a job and they come to work every day and do a good job, they're respectful, give them that respect back. And don't allow other people to mistreat them. Don't allow that. I don't care how well you pay your employees and how many benefits. If you allow them to be mistreated, discriminated against, you're not a good company. And I stand firm in that. Okay, y'all, let me go. I'm supposed to be in a location. I may be in the wrong place. I love y'all. Have a good day. Bye. But um, what I want to say is, if you are an HR professional or... You on, even if you're on a job and you see somebody being mistreated because they may be different by the way they dress or the way they talk or they're quiet and stuff, that, you know, be kind to them. Be kind to them. Because I've seen, you know, and I, I'm telling you, you don't know what difference you can make for a person to a person just by being kind. And I've always been the kind, I'm telling you, I always try to look out for people that other people overlook. Because if you know, if you if you think about Jesus and his life on here on earth, he always hung around with the people who were just average. Think about it. You know, just ordinary people. Not just, I'm not just going to say average. Ordinary people. You know? He lift the lowly ones. And so I, 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 you know, I try to treat everybody the way I want to be treated. And sometimes I think I really do. And like I say, I, a lot of people may not agree and that's fine because in life, we're not going to agree all the time. But, you know, I look at those situations where you have those people, they go and um, they get irate and they start doing things, hurting themselves and other people. And sometimes, you know what? One person could have changed their whole life. And had the opportunity, and I, it would hurt me to know that I had an opportunity to make somebody's life better, and I didn't. It, it really would hurt me. I'm serious. And that's why, you know, a lot of people, you see them. I know you see them yourself. Sometimes when you go places and you approach certain people, they put their head down. But I always make it my business to speak to them because I'm no better than you. You're God's child just like I am. I may be dressed a little better, my hair may be pretty, or I may look like I'm all put together, but baby, we all crooked people trying to get straight. Ain't hey, none of us perfect. We all go through things, we all got situations, and you know, things that we discuss with other people and things we keep to ourselves, but nobody's perfect. You know what I'm saying? So, try to be kind to other people, especially, you know, on a job. You think about it. You go to work on a job 40 hours a week, and you're working around people who, you know, all they know is what you do at work. But you don't know a person's situation when they leave. i never forget. Remember I told y'all I worked at Kmart for 13 years. And we had this lady. And I'm not going to tell her name or where she worked. Because somebody may see this. They may know her or whatever. And if I get too specific, they'll know who I'm talking about. But she had an attitude where she was hard and difficult to work with. A lot of people didn't like to work with her. And um, I, I, you know, I, I can get along with anybody because... I learned to respect people the way I want to be respected, treat them the way I want to be treated. I don't give preferential treatment to anybody. I treat everybody the same. You know what I'm saying? But what I'm saying is, just because a person act mean and hard and all everything, that's just the outward appearance. You really don't know what a person go through. Let me tell you something. I found out years later, they say that woman used to be emotionally and physically abused by her husband so sometimes when you find people who um when you find people who are like uh like kind of like bullies and stuff like that a lot of times what's wrong with them is they act like that at work because they're acting out because of things going on in the home and you find it in children a lot too you know, a lot of times people are acting out because it's really something they're dealing with and they don't really know how to deal with it. So, I don't know. It's, 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 life is hard. You know, it's really, really hard. And that's why I say don't take people for granted. Don't mistreat people. Don't get there and make fun of people. And 
you know, and I, you know, because they don't dress like you, or because they don't look like you, or because they don't live where you live, they still God's children. So you go, you think the Lord blessed you to look down on somebody else? How dare you? You know, my nephew, back to my nephew, he was a good-looking young man. And uh, he used to come see me sometime and talk to me about the problems that we, he was having. Because, you know, I, people know that I'm not judgmental. I made mistakes, too. I'm not perfect. I, you think I'm going to sit here and tell you the worst things in life i ever done? That's between me and God. i never forget my Sunday school teacher. She also a speaker. And she was I, the first time I heard her speak, we had gone to this church. And she got up there. She said, I was a low down dirty none of y'all business. That's between me and God. I'll wait for the same what it was. <laughs> But I'm just telling you, y'all, the world would be a better place. I'm telling you. If there would be less bullying and more love. And that's why I kind of... And if you notice, I really never talk about President Trump. I don't. But the one thing that I wish that if, if I could talk to him, what I would tell him is children are watching. Children are watching. You know? You're in a position where you want people, people are supposed to look up to you and respect you. If they respect you and they think your way is the best way and, and that just the language and the, and, the, and sometimes just the, the I'm going to just say the seasoning in your voice. I, you know, we, we have to be careful. We really, really, really have to be careful because leaders sometimes, a lot of times, set the tone in the country, in the job, in the church. You know, so we just have to be careful. You know, if God chooses you to lead, that, that's a very important job. It really, really is. And you can't take those things for granted. And please don't think you don't 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 use your blessings from God as an opportunity to make yourself superior to others. That's not what it's for. And for the rest of my life, I, I know I'm here to serve, but for the rest of my life, I want to make other people feel better about themselves. And that's just like when I'm interviewing people. A guy yesterday, he was amazed. The day before, no, it was yesterday. He came in and I interviewed him. And I was telling him about, you know, because this guy has a degree. It's another problem I have. So many degree professionals, you know, at least give them an entry level professional job, give them an opportunity. You know, it's, it's just. And in fact, on this uh, this last job that we've been interviewing for, I've interviewed. I think it was five. No, it was four people this week. All of these are degree people, and they're having a very difficult time finding a job. So you know, and I think about that pastor that said that time, if you're in a, a, a place where you can't find a job, leave. And then you know that's. That, that that's that's some true that's some real real stuff that y'all I'm telling y'all because you know and another thing these businesses they're going around and they hiring people because they know they cousin they uncle they friends and all that kind of stuff come on let me tell you something if you want your business to prosper you better hire people based on what they know and who they know because I'm telling you those who they know is is causing your business to suffer. So, like I say, when you putting people in positions, you better make sure you know who you're getting. You know? Um, I remember I was reading this article. I'm going to go ahead and go on with this. It'll be too long and drawn out. Y'all get bored with me. But I remember I was reading this article, and it was talking about uh, this man that died, and he had an opportunity to go. I don't want to get the story wrong, I, but the part I remember the most is stuck out. It said he went to hell. And it wasn't as bad as everybody talked about. So he made a choice to go to hell. And when he come back, it was national T. It was just a bad place. And he said, wow, it wasn't like this yesterday. What changed? He say, and now I'm going to scratch this because I forgot how this story went. I don't want to tell it wrong. <laughs> don't, you know, don't use your blessing from God, you know, to give you resources to live a good life and don't don't use your resources as an opportunity to make somebody feel inferior to you. That's that's you know, you blessed to be a blessing. Not to look down on people. That's the one thing, you know what I'm saying? I just I just don't have that kind of heart. My heart goes out to people who suffering and who don't have air and the utilities off and, and, and walk in the street and you know, because at any time that could be one of us. You think about it, I don't care how much money you have. 
if you have a plan, you, you think about the people that's been professionals and millionaires and they die broke. You know, stay humble. I'm telling you, stay humble. Don't allow the things of this world to turn you away from what's really important. Don't do it. But, um, but yeah, I'm just, you know, I just, I see people suffering and, and my heart goes out to them. And, and, and that's why I'm so grateful for the small things. I'm grateful for y'all because, you know, sometimes you want to vent and you don't really have people that sometimes, you know, people going through things and you don't really want to vent to them. And then sometimes you can get on here and vent to y'all and maybe somebody else who understand who may be going through the same thing. That's why I love YouTube. I do. You know, I yeah, I, I don't really look at pranks and I had one lady I used to watch and everything she do is talking about people and I I don't I I I just don't I don't want that type of I don't have that type of spirit. I'm all about uplifting, encouraging, motivating, inspiring, um Offering advice, something that can help you get through bad times, you know, stuff like that. That that's that's what I'm about. Cause I'm gonna tell you something. Life can get hard, even to the most successful. You know, you think of the people that's no longer here. That was well off, but they ended up committing suicide and all that type of things because material things don't make you happy. You know, a lot of times, you know, we go through life and. As in my younger age, I just really wanted to be successful and I wanted to have a big house and the fine cars and the vacations and stuff. And you know, I, I, I'm not saying that's not what I still want. Um, but the thing about it is my, my focus is different. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not just trying to, I'm not just driven for myself. I want to be able to give back. And for me, success is nothing if you're not able to help somebody else. Yeah. That's why I love the young man Warren Dunn because he's built several homes for single parents. And that's another plight of mine to help single women, especially those trying to pursue an education. It's not easy. You know, you make it a sacrifice and I'm going to do another video on that. And, um, you know, uh, too much pride, you know, in areas where I could have been getting public assistance. I was getting student loans because I was too prideful. You know, and um, now I got the student loans to show for it. But if I would have had to do it all over again, I probably would have gotten some government assistance to help in ways in which I really did qualify. But, you know, like I said, that's that's for another time. But I'm just saying, I we, 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 you know, we all need each other. We do in some shape, form or fashion. And until we really realize that and really expound on it, this world is not going to be what the Lord intended for it to be. You know, you know, I I don't come on here, send money to my PayPal or none of, none of that. All I want is if 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 you really want to do something for me, be kind to people and help somebody who's hurting. That that that's that's my purpose for YouTube because I I see people, I work with them, I'm related to them. You know, if you see somebody that's in need of some help, help them. Sometimes I think that, well, sometimes I know. See, God will bless you with a little to see what you're going to do with it. And then if you, if he can see you, if, if you can show him, or if you can prove to him that you can do a, help a lot, help people with a little, then maybe he'll give you more. You know, but if you want to be blessed to, just to be able to help yourself, that ain't good.